Um, Don't forget John. John, uh, John also uh, George John. was Ford and went to the States. And, yes, again. And, uh, yes. It strikes me you're the you're the one that didn't try and go to the States. Or I'm the, States. the one who. So stayed. why why was that? That's really where I'm headed. I was really like my father. I, I really, and I had my Labour Party, which meant a lot. We, we weren't aspirational, we weren't financially aspirational. We had our values, we were passionate about. So what, what were you aspirational in? What are you, you, you're careful with your language there. What, what are you aspirational in? <laughs> I, I, I love people mm -hmm. um, and I, I care about po poverty. I don't like to see poverty. I would like to see a more egalitarian society, um, but I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not obsessed with power. I I want influence, but I, I don't want mm. it to be a, a assumed. So where, where, where does this culture, politics, um, in you've? your interest in philosophy and religions and uh, where does all that come from when you got mm. when you're coming from a family that all seem to value money oh no my father didn't know no, he was terrible uh, he, he was <laughs> useless with money um <laughs> anyone with with money uh, he he would give it to poor he would give it to anyone if he had any money he would just empty his pockets and give it redistributed. Um, he, he, he was not uh, bothered about money at all. My mother certainly wasn't either and she lived to the age of 90 and she was again out there helping people until she died. She, she was a lovely woman. They both had very good values which fortunately they, they seemed to pass on to me. Yeah good. Good. So what, 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 what? What have you been involved with that where you're most proud? I mean, I, I know for a fact that you've been involved in things like the schools and yes. uh, local councils. And where, where, tell us some of those stories. Uh, oh well, um, rock I, I, I was I was lucky. I I left the RAF and I went along in, in Oxford. I was then I needed a job. So came out of Oxford Circus, tube station, went to a, um, an employment bureau which was adjacent to it. Uh, and the woman behind the counter said, yes, well, I've got a vacancy at Course Halls. And Course Halls happened to be one of the large, largest companies in the country at the time. And I think they were then employing about 140,000 employees. Um, and so I went along to course halls and I, I'm quite well spoken, fortunately. So I was somehow appointed for a, a trainee um, uh, on sales and marketing. And there's a, course halls is a, a textile company, international, multinational? Multinational, yes. Okay. So we and paint manu we're the largest paint manufacturer, we're second largest paint manufacturer, I think, at the time, Pinch and Johnson. Um, probably, certainly the largest textile company in, in Britain. Um, they were very large in America, but the Americans, during the war, obviously bought up many com many U UK companies, mm. of which one was Cortles, um, at a very low bargain price. So we lost the American company. But nevertheless, course rules, I joined course rules as a trainee, three year trainee, training ship or trainee uh, work, work placement in the West End starting um, 
uh, and there I was very lucky. It, um, my, my whole business career seems to have been built on luck. Uh, <laughs> for yeah. I, at Court Halls, I'm on my sale when I was training as a salesman. Um, I would be going out trying to employ, trying to uh, sell uh, curtain fabric, woven fabric, whatever it was, um, at the time. And um, I used to, oh, so sorry, I'm losing it now. That's okay. You, you had all sorts of amazing stories, as I recall, of things like meeting Alec Isagonis. Oh, yeah, uh, well, and, oh, yes. And uh, uh, during the court the, all... the Campbell uh, yes. dynasty for Bluebird. Yeah. And... Well, during my period with court halls, I was seconded to all sorts of subsidiaries. Um, at one period, I was with Cortell, which was an acrylic fibre. And we were weaving Cortel into viscose fabrics, woven fabrics. And we produced a few materials for the motor industry. This enabled me to go around the motor industry trying to sell the upholstery material. Mm -hmm. um, and I, because of Cortel's name, I was going in and meeting people at premium level. Um, at one period, I met Alec Isagonis, went to lunch. Who is the designer at, of the at Mini? Alec the, the she was, yes, yeah, she was yeah. famous for the um, Mini. The, uh, uh, he was re responsible for the Mini. But he was, I didn't have a lot to talk, to meet and talk to him about. But um, we did uh, converse at lunch at a place called, um, it was Austin's factory, but I think they had 16 different restaurants. Is that uh, the Cowley Road Oxford one? No, 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 it was the, uh, up at Longbridge okay. in Manchester, in yeah, yeah. Um, Birmingham. Yeah. And uh, uh, they had about 16 different restaurants for the grades of employee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, which is amazing. Uh, another time I was trying to call her, um, Donald Campbell approached Courtauld's. He was out for money. He was trying to get money for his Bluebird, for his speed attempts. Was this the land speed or the water speed? This is the land speed one. Uh, this was water speed. Water speed, okay. Uh, and, um, so he was trying to get money for it, and so uh, he was like only asking for five thousand pounds. I seem to recall he he didn't get it, but I went down to his house, beautiful house um, in Surrey, uh, and upholstered um, the seat of Bluebird of a Bluebird model in his house uh, with a colleague of mine and we went down for two days so we went down there and we had a meal down there and um, delightful his mm -hmm. wife was quite delightful his daughter at the time was always out riding a horse around the rather large garden that they had yes so um a very interesting period uh that is great because you, you had a, a great career, and, and that happens. I'm going to just take you back down to the <clears throat> RAF and uh, steer us through that. Oh. You said you left school with not a lot. Not you a were, lot. You were working at the age of 15, um, and then how did the RAF come about? What, oh what well, come na national service was um, applied in those days. So what, I, what year was this? So the war finished forty five. What what year did you oh, join? Uh, well, how old were you when you joined? I was no, 48, 49. Okay. Uh, about forty nine, I suppose. And um, yes, forty nine, uh, fifty. 
-hmm. 50 because uh, I caught the um, a variety of things. But yes, I joined the RAF when I went to, after square bashing, which was eight weeks of training. Mm -hmm. um, I then went to um, RAF Oakington, just outside Cambridge. Um, and we had, it was a Meteor aircraft uh, um, station, uh, training RAF pilots and um, a few of them died unfortunately and mainly coming into land they were directed up again by the instructor and it had a stalling period at the RAF. So what, what was your role in, in the RAF? Oh, the I was just a, a, a minion, I was just um, a, a, a clerk, mm -hmm. a junior clerk but I've always been had a nosy <laughs> um, instinct, and so I got up at night time with a number of the experienced pilots who were then training um, the uh, new recruits, and uh, so I, I got up with the instructor, and the recruits would be on our wingtips. Um, so you did fly. You flew. You flew. We in, flew. Yeah, yeah. I flew quite a lot. And these are jets, aren't they? These, these yeah, were these, the, these are jets. Yeah. Um, meteor jets. And so the, we, we would. I was in a two-seater, and we would be leading the um, squadron. Uh, hardly a squadron, but three, three, three aircraft up in the sky, ourselves leading, and uh, a meteor on either wingtip and they were the students but um, at one stage I would be instructed to put my mask on full power. Um, <laughs> what did that mean? There, this was because we would be going in for a steep dive and uh, I didn't enjoy it I must have. <laughs> um, later on and during uh, the uh, period of the recruits coming back and onto the station and going out. We had tiger moths on the station for training. And um, there I went up in a tiger moth with um, this uh, young uh, aspirational um, pilot. He was, he was a good, good pilot. Mm. But at one stage during this flight in the tiger moth, he said, oh, do you mind if I do a loop the loop? And I said, yes, I do. <laughs> um, I didn't do anything spectacular in the Tiger Moth. All I did was get up there and get back down onto the bumpy earth. But, um, a good national service. 